parents are like, it's not safe for my kid to stand at the bus stop anymore. What the fuck? <laughs> that's where that's where characters are made. Yo, for real. Stop standing at the bus stop with your kids. We're back. We are in Studio 2.0. We got the new sound panels up. Hopefully you can hear a difference in our acoustics. We worked really hard setting those up. Yep. It's been months in the making. I'm excited about it. You're listening to the No Prisoners podcast with Andrew and Gilmar. If you hear some somebody breaking bones in the background, that's Rambo, who obnoxiously doesn't care about anything but himself. <laughs> pretentious golden retriever that we have here. Yeah. <laughs> um, had two back-to-back good episodes. Uh, we had Logan Camp on, Muay Thai fighter. Up and coming MMA fighter. Check that out if you haven't already. Also, we got the Brit Around Town podcast with Brittany from Around Town. Any town, your town, Doyle's town. Let's get it. Share us with a friend. Kip, keep hitting that. Kip. Kip, Kip, Kip. Kip, Kip. Kip, Kip. push a beat. Um, keep hitting the subscribe button. Our subscribers are glowing glowing i'm really messing up for you guys today growing slowly but surely we're getting there we got the youtube channel we're on spotify apple podcasts we got it all you can watch the episodes you can listen to the episodes you can watch and listen to the episodes so we had episode 123 with Brittany which will be out by the time you're listening to this episode. We had episode 122 with Logan Camp. We had, uh, and then go back and listen to the Ryan Rumor episode from, uh, he's from Worldwide Stereo, great all-around friend of ours, uh, very knowledgeable in all things sports and sound. Yeah. So we're about to launch this episode. We got a lot to talk about. Um. We'll, we'll just get right to it because everybody's got a hot take on the Will Smith slapping uh, Chris Rock. We've heard the hot takes from our own company. We've heard everyone, <laughs> um, everyone else. By the time you listen to this, everyone else has already spit their knowledge on it. So we're going to make it short and sweet. We got Will Smith smacking Chris Rock on stage at the Academy Awards, um, the Oscars, rather, uh, this past weekend, probably last weekend by the time you listen to this. Um, Yeah, I don't know what my hot take is other than it happened. I think it's fake. I think it was rigged to get more people talking about the Oscars and to get people more watching the Oscars. I don't know. I mean, maybe Chris Rock is that dumb where he could go and, like, I don't know how you would let somebody approach you with such intensity um, and just keep your hands behind your back and just, like, not even. Like, it was very clear Will Smith was coming up on stage for business. Look at this. Boom. Smiling as he walks away. I don't know. Gilmar, what's your thoughts? Uh, When I initially saw it, well, first of all, I was about to go to bed. I had no idea the Oscars were on. You watched it live? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. I, nobody cares about the Oscars. Yeah, nobody. I, again, I was about to go to bed. I had no idea the Oscars was going on. Just before I go to bed, you know, I do my, my scroll through Twitter, see what's going on. And then I saw that Will Smith was trending. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I look at it, and I told Diana, I was like, I think Will Smith just smacked the shit out of Chris Rock at the Oscars. And she's like, the Oscars are on? I'm like, I know, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, Yeah, that's kind of my hot take. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? Right? I mean, if you give a shit, that's okay. You're allowed to. Yeah. But it's the Oscars. You have some of the most, I mean, some of, like, you have the most, like, wealthy slash disconnected people all in a room. I don't trust actors. Anybody whose profession is to portray somebody else all the time. Like, how do you know when you're doing, like, I know a few actors. And when you're with them, after they become actors, you're like, 
this isn't how you used to be. Like, all of a sudden, you're this new person because you acted in this role. Like, you're permanently got an Irish accent. <laughs> that makes no sense to me. Like, mm -hmm. I think actors are, it, it's a it's a worthwhile profession, obviously, financially. Um, but these people, like, Will Smith, like, all these people, they have no no connection to the real world. They obviously can't take, if this was real, obviously can't take a joke, even a bad joke. Like, you still got to be like, all right. No, you, you got, you know, Muhammad Ali slash I am legend walks up on the stage <laughs> and he just cr channels Karate Kid and goes in there. That, like, Will Smith, like, he's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And then the other whole thing about the matter was, like, yeah. See, he's smiling. See, he walks up, smacks him, and then he's smiling as he walks away. Yeah, I don't Like, know. it just seems like, like, if Chris Rock, like, it just seems too convenient. And poor Chris Rock, if it's real, sold all his tickets out this week for his, <laughs> for his new tour. Yeah, he's going through it. He Yeah, he's struggling. He just made a boatload of money for getting slapped in the face. Mm -hmm. Right? And then Will Smith is at the after party, like, acting like he's slapping people in the face while he's rapping, getting jiggy with it. Like, these people are idiots. <laughs> if this was real, I lost an immense amount of respect for Will Smith. Mm. And I feel bad for Chris Rock. A uh, hot takeover. What's your conclusion? Uh, yeah, it should have been handled differently. Um, Will Smith, why would you do that? And it kind you're kind of bullying Chris Rock because you know he's not gonna do anything back to you. Yeah, he um, would he have kept that same energy if The Rock made a joke? Oh no. Or who's that Aquaman dude? Oh, uh, Jason Momoa. Oh, yeah, Momoa was pu presenting rewards that night. Oh, he would, was? yeah. If he said a joke like that, would you have walked up on stage to Jason Momoa and been like, "Let me smack you in the face"? I don't think so. Mm. Dude's all roided up. He would have snapped skinny ass Will Smith over his fucking <laughs> knees and spanked him. Yeah. Right. Or Joe Rogan. What if Joe? Oh, he would never be in. Uh, like he doesn't give a shit about these things. You you wouldn't be able to get Joe Rogan presenting at an award show ever because he just doesn't care. Yeah. But like, if Joe Rogan made a shitty joke like that, would Will Smith have walked up on the black belt jujitsu Joe Rogan, who's also a very decorated Taekwondo fighter? Probably not. Like, people don't know about Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan was like state champion in Massachusetts, I'm pretty sure, and national Taekwondo champion, I'm pretty sure, at one point. Mm -hmm. Dude can throw one of the, like, Joe Rogan has shown real MMA fighters how to throw roundhouse kicks or spinning back kicks, like, with style. Like, there's videos of Joe Rogan throwing spinning back kicks where it's like, oh, what? Yeah, he moves that's, the bag. That's Joe. Yeah. Yeah, so hot takes over. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There are a few people in this world that should get smacked, though. Yeah. But not in that situation. Yeah, for sure. People should be held accountable for their words, but you shouldn't be slapping comedians because, like, comedians are a necessary truth. Mm-hmm. Like they keep us keep us honest, keep us keep us humble. Yeah. Um, internal hot takes was you know you run your mouth, you talk shit, get hit. But eh, who are you talking shit to? You're not bullying anybody when you're doing comedy. You're not punch. You don't punch down. You don't exactly. bully anyone. Oh, you you made a bald joke to a rich woman and her rich husband. Is that really that bad? Who still, by the way, looks hot. Bald, yeah, she's so. <laughs> bald, alopecia or not, she's still hot. Yeah, shut up. Like, there's like millions of women in this country that wish they looked half as good as Jada Pinkett Smith. Get some tougher skin, you detached as fuck. Yeah, all right, now uh, we're gonna move on because everybody's already talked about this. And I, don't <laughs> I don't, yeah. Uh, last thing is not gonna make me watch the Oscars at all or next year, so yeah, whatever they did, I mean, it yeah. worked for maybe what three days that it's gonna be worth. And well, I mean, no, yeah, just whatever. We yeah. just saw some bitch tendencies all around, yeah. Chris okay. Rock behaving like a bitch, Will Smith behaving like a bitch, mm -hmm. and whatever. That's the hot take. Yeah. So moving on to more pressing matters, we officially have haters. Yo. <laughs> we officially have made it to the big time. Yeah, man, we got some haters. We got some haters on the Audax Revival YouTube page saying that my hat is pink when it is, in fact, maroon. And there's, a, I mean, it kind of looks a little pink. It it could. It could. So, I don't know. Let's see. Can we see? Well, we got 85 comments now. Whatever, whatever, whatever. And then, see, so the people that are calling me out, apparently a framer of 40 years says you can't frame in a pink hat. 
<laughs> sir. And then somebody else backed them up, and they're like, I framed houses for 23 years, and that's a pink hat. Totally unacceptable. And I'm like, get get out of here. And Loki was a little upset at first, and then I realized anybody that's commenting in the middle of the night about what color my hat is in a YouTube video when I'm literally not important at all, you're a peasant. Yeah. Hot take. I don't even know. King studs and trimmers argue. There's literally like all these comments are like. Framed incorrectly. They'll go back up to the one above that comment. Roof's weight sits on the outside walls only which sit on the foundation. Lie. Right? There's load bearing walls in the center of your house. I mean, maybe this guy, Sean McDonald, is only framing small houses. And that's true. Like if you're framing row homes or small houses. Sure, the load's distributed to the outside walls only. Mm. But when you're framing b- b- big houses, large ones, enormous sometimes, sometimes the load's distributed on the inside of the house. We have a structural steel beam running through that. Mm. That guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Doesn't know. So I quickly realized, with the help of Gilmar, that these comments mean nothing. <laughs> yeah, they don't. They don't mean anything. So now I'm looking forward to the comments. Uh huh. Like, I'm like, what other negativity can we bring about in the world purely by talking about framing? <laughs> We're talking about framing a house. Yeah, man. And you're upset about it. You got to gotta get to betterhelp.com. Oh, for sure, bro. If that was bro, a sponsor, I wish we do. If somebody could get us a betterhelp.com sponsorship. Oh, they've been under fire recently. Betterhelp.com? Yeah. Sidebar. What's going on with Betterhelp.com? <laughs> Apparently, they, they weren't treating uh, clients and and um, their employees correctly. Oh, you're telling me the firm that's supposed to help you, that's massively marketed, and you're supposed to Zoom with a sh- complete stranger via the app, wasn't doing things properly? That doesn't sound right. Mm. What? Oh, I looked up. Problems, Problems a scandal. Obviously, scandal, that's the word you're bro. looking for, dude. Get your f- English together. What is the BetterHelp.com controversy? All right, there we go. Let's do this. There needs to be. Uh, these all seem kind of old. I want to know the most recent shit, but you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, you're. Yeah. Well, I don't know, dude. Yeah. So if you if you're on YouTube, I I don't think I've ever left a negative comment. I've left a negative comment on the No Prisoners Instagram page, mm-hmm. being like somebody does something real stupid. It was it was the uh, the, the Siamese twins. What's the rappers? Siamese the twins. The Bolo Boys or what? What were the the two rappers with the tattoo? Oh, the fucking Island Boys. Island Boys. Would you say the Bolo Boys? No, I thought it was the Siamese Boys <laughs> separated <laughs> at birth. <laughs> this is us talking. Yeah. Every time <laughs> it's like, shut up, dude. You literally sound like the Siamese cats Damn. from whatever that movie is with the lady in the tramp. Oh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. are Siamese. Can you please? It's literally they stole the flow from Lady in the Tramp. Yo, that's I, what it is. It all makes sense now. It is casual news, cash news cash that's news, coming maybe. at your face. Yep. So, there's a scandal about better help. We know nothing about it. We got haters, Chris Rock. Got smacked <laughs> by Will Smith. The world's falling apart. And this week, the um, the Biden laptop. Do you, do you know anything about this? Nah, dude. Sorry, I don't. What's, you don't what's up the, with? You want to know why you don't know anything about the Biden laptop? Because the news is suppressed. So during, let me, we'll take a step back. Wait, who do we trust? CNN? We, yeah, let's do that. Right. Let's do that. Let's go down the CNN fake news. So last election, right before the election happened somebody in one of the news agencies got a hold of a laptop that they then turned over to the fbi and the conspiracy was that it was hunter biden's left laptop that he left at a repair shop and then never picked up and then somebody sold that laptop to a news company and then that company knew what to do with it they turned it over to the fbi because they're honest and they know what to do with things like that wink wink (laughs) you know what i'm saying so, people are talking about the whole thing online at the time, and Twitter and YouTube and all of these woke companies that we're broadcasting on, obviously, like, 
suppressed the information. Mm -hmm. They said, we don't know if this is real or not, so we're just going to suppress it, right? It turns out that laptop was real. And when I was reading a couple days ago, a poll of people that voted for Biden said one in six wow. would not have voted for Joe Biden if they had known about the laptop, right? Joe Biden's son is a crackhead, mm -hmm. drug addict. Yeah. Not knocking drug doers. You, there's Somebody's got to do it because somebody's got to sell it and not put, puts food on somebody's table, you know? Yeah. I'm not knock, knocking it. It's a, another discussion that we don't care about. Mm-hmm. But Joe Biden's son has apparently been caught red-handed and is now has an open tax investigation against him for not paying his taxes. And then there's all of these payments from Kazakhstan. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's some from China where they're like, he was under tax investigation, so a lot of his accounts were like locked up. Oh. Somehow people were setting businesses up. And Joe Biden's son is getting, what's his name again? I already forgot it. I'm just blanking out. Joe, Joe Jr. Joe Jr.? Uh, Hunter Biden? Hunter. Joe Jr. I think is dead. Maybe. No, I think he died a few years ago. Oh, yeah, it's Hunter. Though. And then Hunter banged his brother's wife. Facts. Nice. Good job. So this guy's just an all-around dirtball. And the whole Russia collusion against Trump, that whole, that whole thing was a lie. Like, there, there was no collusion with Russia and Trump. Mm. It's proven now. Yeah, the investigation ha closed. There's like, we couldn't find shit. It was basically a lie. They made that up. But it turns out your boy Hunter was colluding with Russia and a bunch of, like, ex-Soviet countries and China and South American countries. Like, Hunter Biden has literally taken payments from Chinese, like, the literal Chinese government to, like, he was like, oh, yeah, sure, I can get you in the White House. I'll get you Joe's here. I'll, you can talk to my dad. Just give me 80 grand a month. Right? He's caught buying cars. Like, all this shit. Like, this is the president's son we're talking about here. What? And he's, like, he's literally a criminal. And, like, his, his dad's apparently hard on crime. Comes up with all those crime bills in the 70s and 80s that lock up everybody. You got a joint in your pocket? Go to jail. Goodbye. Goodbye. Do not pass go. Sit in jail for the joint. The jail joint. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's a bunch of people that were locked up for weed and things like that and, like, ridiculous drug offenses. And then you got Hunter Biden just, like, palling around with his buddies collecting money from all these countries to, like, leverage his relationship with his dad. And this dude's not in jail? Mm -hmm. Something's going on here. Bro. <laughs> this isn't conspiracy talk. This is real talk. Yeah, this is, this real. is cash news. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's just double standard. So CNN, the the almighty, says the double standard with Hunter Biden's laptop is worse than you think. Right? And these are the, the same news agencies that wouldn't report on it when it was happening. Mm -hmm. Right? So come on. Do we have like a thing in here? What thing? Do we, I don't know. We do have like a quick hot take we can read off of here. All right. Let's do the first one. Uh, the Attorney General Garland, do your job so we can do ours, declared an ex uh, exasperated Democratic Republican Representative Elaine Luria of Virginia on Monday night as part of her work as a member of the January 6th House Select Committee. Um, this lady and others in the committee expressed frustration with uh, Justice Garland and the Justice Department is still not acting on the December 14th vote by the House recommending criminal charges against formal uh, Donald Trump in the White House. So at the same time, this whole thing with Hunter Biden going down and everybody's still focused on Donald Trump mm -hmm. and January 6th and did he do anything? Was he responsible for that shit? We now know the FBI was kind of meddling in that whole January 6th thing. Like, all this dirt is everywhere. And the FBI has a laptop with all of this incriminating evidence on Hunter Biden. And nothing's going down. So, like what, when, when are we going to have, like... And this is only, like, I'm not... 
I don't give a shit anymore, right? I'm so exhausted by all this politics stuff that I literally don't. I'm politically homeless. Yeah. None of these people are doing anything good for me, so I don't care. But I do care at the same time. Like, how do you think our country moves forward when we have such a, like, unbalanced, like, we're going to attack these people for some bad stuff, but we're not going to attack these people or prosecute these people for, like, equally, if not worse, bad stuff. Like, how can we trust a president whose son's, like, snorting coke off hookers' buttholes and then, like, forgetting his laptop with important incriminating evidence at the place? Like, this guy raised this kid. Like, how good, like, we should be really kind of like, mm, eh, mm. Eh, you know, mm, kind of situation. And then you got, like, it's just such a mess with the Bidens right now. And then you got Joe Biden... Literally going out in front of the press and being like, oh, you know, he he messed up and he said that the 82nd Airborne Army Division is training Ukrainian soldiers. That's not good. <laughs> I mean, it's... And then they're like, oh, no, that's not happening. And he's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And they tried to redact it. So I think the... And then he also said something about how, like, Putin shouldn't be in prison anymore. He needs to be removed. That's a... That's going to not help the situation. Mm -hmm. Now Putin's back's against the wall. You know, next thing you know, he fires a nuke because the president slipped up and released classified information in a live press meeting. Mm -hmm. And then when the press asked him about it this week, he got super defensive and angry. He's like, you're putting those words in my mouth. And they're like, no, you said that. And he's like, no, I didn't. Uh, okay. Yeah, you did, but sorry, Mr. President. <laughs> it's like this is such a hot mess and I don't know how our country moves forward in any sort of like what was Trump unifying our country yeah, maybe half the country yeah but he definitely wasn't bringing people together definitely not <laughs> like but then you got Biden who comes and he's literally like I'm, I inherited all these presidents from tr there's problems from Trump but a lot of like the financial and fiscal problems or left over from, like, the Obama administration. So it's like, oh, you were part of the president, like, before that. Like, there's no accountability yeah. in our leadership. And it's like, all excuses. It's very confusing to me how we move forward as a unified country when we have such stupid, incapable leaders. Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> like, I swear to God, the next election, I, 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 I pray to God that somebody slightly unifying <laughs> comes up. Yeah, I'm, sick. I'm like, I, I don't know who that's going to be. Maybe DeSantis. And the only reason I think he's legit is because, I mean, Florida is doing really well. Mm -hmm. Florida didn't lock down. Florida doesn't really deal with, like, a whole lot of bullshit. They got Disney World and, like, the whole, like, you know, pedophilia thing going on there. But that's not his problem. <laughs> and then, like, Rick or DeSantis, is, he was, you know... In the Navy, he was a JAG officer. He, you know, he's been doing a good job as governor of Florida. Like, I think he has a real opportunity to win. But other than that, like, Democrat, Republican, whoever, I don't really know who, like, a good candidate is that they could put up at this point. And I swear to God, if Dwayne The Rock Johnson runs, <laughs> I'm going to be furious. Over, I think he's going to run. <sighs> he's turning down work. <clears throat> like, people are keeping track of it. Like, he's literally turning down work outside of, like, a certain date. So, like, why would you do that? He's He's been saying political, like, his hot take on pop. Like, shut up, dude. Yeah. You're shooting steroids and doing tricep pulls, like, every day of the week. Like, shut up. Like, no, dude. You get the, f like, you're a Hollywood actor. Like, yes, you're very successful. But, the, like, uh, the problem with Hollywood, not going back to the Will Smith thing, but kind of. The problem with actors is they, like, they think because they're successful that they can be successful and that their hot take matters on this stuff. And then by the same way, like, I kind of think the same thing about myself. So, I get <laughs> <laughs> It's just, but, like, I think my hot takes on things are a little bit more, like, well-rounded and based in, like, information I've absorbed. It's not just, like, my opinion because I, you know, I, I played a character or a role. It's like, oh, well, I played you know, King Richard in the whatever movie. So I I know all about British history. Mm. It's like, what? It's got nothing to do with that. What is it? It's got nothing to do with that. You played a fucking character from the 1700s. He literally has no attachment. To, like, shut up. <laughs> you know, your assistant has an assistant. 
I don't give a shit about you. Yeah, right. God damn it. It's just weird. So this really grinds my gears. I'm obviously very upset about this whole thing. <clears throat> I'm more I mean, worried than I am. Yeah. Obviously. It's your country. You want to see it, you know, prosper. Uh, yeah, like, I want us to be prosperous. Uh, I think because if our country is prosperous, people will be happier. I don't know if that's true. Like, I think we'll be, you know, a safer country. Mm-hmm. Without Biden in office, because he's slipping up. Like, even if the 82nd Airborne is training Ukrainian soldiers, that's top secret. We need, we don't want the whole world to know. Yeah. Let's keep that. Sh- shush, 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 shush. <laughs> and then, you know, they released the presidential budget. And, you know, leading up to the election and everything, all the stuff he said he was going to do with the budget to reduce inequality and promote minorities and you know, bring us back into the world. He's literally doing nothing, none of that. All that stuff is now off the table again. Mm. Military spending is the highest it's been. Inevitably, the Republicans are like, we wish it were higher, but it's pretty good. Yeah. All the defense contractors and all the Congress people that are invested in those defense companies are like, yeah, we're going to make some money this year. Yeah, It's just kind of like this huge, huge, like, racket. We live in a in an oligarchy and here we are, like, literally, like, everybody who, who can barely sound out three syllables is like, Russia and the oligarchs, we got to take their money. Yeah, it's, it's a new like, buzzword. It's the new buzzword. What, we, what people don't realize is we live in an oligarch society, mm. right? We don't live in a republic, like a democratic republic like everybody thinks they are. So your vote counts. Your opinion counts. It doesn't. Unless you've got, unless you're in the three comma club, billionaire, for those of you who don't know the three comma club is, because you got three commas. Yeah. Spell it out for you the last time I'm ever going to do it for you. <laughs> Unless you're in that club, you don't have a say in shit. And all these people, like, um, it's unfortunate that they get so wrapped up and, like, do you see what Ukraine did today? CNN just reported by a It's like, you know what? It is important, and there is terrible shit going on over there. But, like, try not to get distracted because you still got to put, put food on your plate. So... Right now, I just see all this, like, Will Smith, this, this. It's like, boom, 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 drama, drama, drama. And none of it really matters. Because it doesn't matter because you don't have a fucking say. It doesn't matter. So yeah. just collect your check and go home. Be happy. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Take that. Ad- I'm going to take that advice. That reminds me of, uh, did you ever run for president in eighth grade or something? Did I ever run for president? Yeah. No, did you? Yeah. Oh, obviously not. Nobody would have voted for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that just reminds me of, you know, what you were saying with uh, all this budget and they have done nothing with it. They just promised all these things. That reminds me when I was in eighth grade and we were running for president and we just promised all these things we're that were feasible. We're going to extend lunch. <laughs> yeah. Ten extra minutes. Yeah. And the teachers are like, you don't have the authority to do exactly. that. Exactly. We're going to do it. That's something <laughs> we're gonna early dismissal four more days of the month. It's like you're gonna get out early on Fridays. Yeah, principal's like, yeah, that you can't do that. <laughs> we're gonna do it. Let's riot. That's something I was thinking about. No one kids would promise all this shit, and teachers would never say anything about it. They just let us fucking rattle off. I think I promised bike racks or something. Yeah, <laughs> that never happened. Yeah, we're gonna get <laughs> bike racks so you can lock your bike up yeah. and it won't get stolen. And yeah. people are like, "Yeah, <laughs> that shit was wild, man." I want. We're gonna course, do but. pizza Tuesdays and Friday. <laughs> yeah, for real. <sighs> for real, Domino's every. You Friday. won. Yeah. What year? Where I was, I think I was in the sixth grade or seventh grade. So, two thousand. How old are you in a third grade or, I mean, sixth grade or whatever the fuck? 12. You're 12? 11 or 12. And so 2006, 2007, dude, something like that. D- dude, you're a fucking politician. I was. Not anymore. No, dude. Once a, once you're a politician, you're always a politician. Get the fuck out of here. I see you over there politicking. Nah, bro. Like, t- like making me promises and shit. What I promise you? Dude, you promised me these soundboards. <laughs> we got them. Yeah, but it took months. <laughs> but we got them. <laughs> okay. You're a halfway decent, decent, decent. decent. You're a decent politician, Dave. Yeah, bro, I don't got any scandals. You can check my laptop. I'm all good. Yo, but you probably like, you probably just cleaned your laptop. No, it's always clean. What do you mean? I do. I don't know, man. If I dig deep enough, I'll find a scandal on there. You might. You might not. Oh. I don't know. 
I don't know. Just don't look at my G drive, you know. You know what's scandalous? <laughs> these soundboards. Yeah, why? You politic these. <laughs> we did this. What are you talking <laughs> yo, about? Yo, I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> I don't even, yo, the way we got these is fucking insane. <laughs> yeah. And these are not cheap. No. Tell everybody how much we paid for them. I think we. It was $109 in FedEx shipping. Yeah. So we, we paid about a. Uh, $109 and a whole bunch of frustration. Yeah. Yep. And, and we got the panels here. Yeah, man. They're fresh out of Miami. Fresh out of Miami. These are Miami panels. Yep. They've so been in homes. I wish people listening or watching could come into the room, the studio 2.0. Yeah. Before we put the panels up. Yeah. And then now the panel's up. It literally sounds so much different in <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, it does. You literally could just... No reverb, that? no like, reverb. No re like before if we clapped, you'd be like, Oh my god, my ears. Now I'm like nothing. Yeah, see you clap it. Dude, that's a that's a foolproof way to test how legit these sound panels Yo, are. Yo, this shit is treated, man. This is a sound treated room. Come get your fucking recordings in here, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yo. Hit me up. <laughs> Yo, freestyling, dude. Yo, I know bro. two I know two chords on the guitar now. We'll be spitting freestyle Yo, country music. Yeah. I'm gonna be a freestyle country singer. With a guitar? With the acoustic guitar, yeah. Holy shit. You got to play me a song. I mean, I'll play you two chords and s wrap you a fresh thing. That's cool, bro. Light a candle on there. What does the candle have to do with it? You know? Just set the mood? <laughs> yeah. Will it turn the lights down? Sure. Turn the lights down. Mm -hmm. Set the mood. Yeah. Gonna drink a beer. Mm-hmm. And clean this deer. Wow, dude. <laughs> Fucking bars, dude. Dude, dropping country bars. Yeah, I'm not ready for this. I shit. can't I can't rap like normally like push a push. like yeah. I just don't have like I'm not from the street. So I don't have that the street voice. Yeah. But you wanna talk country? You got the country. I can fake country all day. I'm not from the country either. I'm somewhere from between the street and the country. <laughs> it's called the suburbs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what people from the suburbs sound like. I guess me, like if I just talked into the mic, we just rapped about Rambo. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think you're suburban enough. You don't sound suburbs. Suburbs. Mm. What do I sound means. like then? You sound like you're Philly. I don't know. I sound like I'm Philly. Yeah, it's not. It's not. But it's not the. Not the bad Philly. Yeah, not Wooder and uh, Wooder. I, I, Wooder. I, so every now and then, like once in a blue moon, like maybe three times a year, I accidentally say "use guys." <laughs> use guys and it's literally just because i'm talking so fast she's talking so fast and i'm there just like go. use guys yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys want to go down to wawa <laughs> get some meatball subs get some johns yo you're gonna get this john yeah, yeah, yeah what it what it is yo what it is yo hmm. jeez can't do it i mean do you want to what do you know what are we talking about next on cash news here damn cash news oh dude dude so will smith slaps <laughs> Uh, the Rock, Chris Rock, Chris Rock, yeah, the, ori the original Rock, the original Rock, the one and only Chris Rock, yeah, yeah, Christopher, yeah. <laughs> and Colby Co Covington gets sucker punched by Jorge Masvidal. If you don't know who these people are, they're UFC fighters. They just fought a couple of weeks ago, and Colby literally beat the brakes off Jorge Masvidal. Mm -hmm. And coming out of like a nightclub in like Jorge basically tracked Colby down while he was in Miami. Jorge's from Miami. Kobe was in Miami, and Jorge runs up with a mask on and his hood up and sucker punches two times Colby Covington. Chips his tooth and messes up his watch. Damn. Gets, a, gets arrested. Felony assault charges. Aggravated assault. Assault day. Right? And then the whole fighting community was like, well, Colby's not going to press charges, blah, blah, blah. Colby's pressing charges. Yeah. Unprecedented fighting community. It was a bitch move to sucker punch him. Jorge Masvidal is like the self-proclaimed sucker punch king mm. and dine and dash king. I'm pretty sure he's banned <laughs> from Denny's. I'm not even kidding. Like he literally has like years ago, he came out in like a, in like a press meeting or an interview. He was like, yeah, like. I'll suck a punch anybody kind of a thing. And then he's like, yeah, hey, I'm also known for dining and dashing because he's just from the street. He yeah. His dad's in prison for life for murder. Like the dude is literally from the street. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't make it okay. Sucker punch Colby. Unfortunate circumstance. He might do two to five years in jail now. Jeez. So the whole thing was though, like he sucker punched Colby because Colby allegedly said bad things about Jorge's kids. But all, all Colby said on record was, 
Jorge's a deadbeat dad. Mm. Didn't mention his kids at all. Just maybe he felt bad for his kids because Jorge's a deadbeat dad. It's a pretty deadbeat dad thing to do because now you're like, oh, you're mad because somebody said something bad about your kids, but now you're going to go to jail. Where are you going to be for your kids? Yeah. In jail? It's hard to parent from prison. <laughs> you know what I'm I saying? Heard, yeah. Yeah, that might be a thing right there. <laughs> it's hard to parent from prison. It's hard to parent from prison. You know what I'm saying? The streets is death row. Yeah, not a lie. Too, too controversy. Is there a video on the sucker punch? No, nah, I don't think so. Mm. I think it was pretty quick and clean, but there's video of like Jorge getting arrested and then running out of the police car into the station so nobody could see him, but everybody saw him. What the fuck? And is this his mugshot? Yeah, this is mugshot. Dude, he's fucking slimy. He looks like he sells perfume in the mall. <laughs> you like walk past him, you like push your girlfriend over to the side. You're like, no, no, no. <laughs> you already smell good. Don't listen. Don't talk to that. Yeah, don't talk to him. He's trying to sell you hand lotion. Okay. So the, um, I don't know. That's what, crazy. Yeah, what do you think about sucker punching? I think that's some bitch shit. Yeah, especially because you just got your ass kicked yeah. for 25 minutes. Like, it's clear you're you're not as good a fighter. I think if they had, like, had he come up to him face-to-face and was like, now we're going to fight for real, Colby would have beat the shit out of him again in the street and smacked his head off the concrete. Mm. So I think the only way this plays out positively for Jorge is he's going to get his ass beat for 25 more minutes. Yeah. So, like, two scenarios I see. Jorge goes to jail. Mm-hmm. Jorge doesn't go to jail because the charges get dropped. But why would the charges get dropped? It's Because Colby gets a phone call from Uncle Dana White. Dana White's like, yeah, look, we make a lot of money off Jorge fighting. Could you drop these charges and you can fight him again? I'll give you a bonus. And I'll give you I'll <laughs> pay you to fight Jorge again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I think it's even if Jorge offered to pay for the tooth and pay for the watch, it's a ninety thousand dollar Rolex. There's literally not a Rolex I know about that's ninety grand. So it must be some diamond encrusted fucking watch. Probably if you put diamonds on a watch unnecessarily, it's just not okay. I'm literally like the most expensive Rolex I know about is like thirty five. And I could have lied about that. <laughs> Yeah, see, look, Rolex Daytona, 34000 Rolex Daytona with diamonds on it, 134000 It's the diamonds. Yeah, damn, this one's a million. Iced out. So, I think if the charges get dropped, they're going to fight again in the ring. It's going to sell a shitload of pay-per-view. Oh, for Kobe's sure. Kobe's going to get a pay-per-view points, and he's going to make a bunch of money. He's going to beat up Jorge again. And I hope this time it's, you know, a more exciting fight because the last fight you just kept him on the ground and stomped his face in. You have the argument that maybe Jorge won run round. Colby beat him up for four out of five rounds Mm -hmm. unanimously. Yeah, it wasn't that close. Um, I'm more okay with this sucker punch than Chris Rock getting slapped in the face. (laughs) I guess so. You know what I'm saying? You're just dealing with crazy people. Yeah. This is expected. This, this kind of makes sense to me. Yeah. It's Will Smith slapping a little comedian. Like, Will Smith towers over Chris Rock. He's a bigger dude. Like, Jorge, and, at least they're in the same class, you know? Mm-hmm. Colby's, but the reason I think this is going to go down, Colby, Usman's already off the chart for him to fight. He's not fighting Usman again. Usman no. doesn't want to fight him. Usman's the holder of the belt. Yeah. Colby's number one contender, but he's going to get his ass beat if he fights Usman. Yeah. So, just stay number one contender. Who does he fight next? There's nobody for him to fight. Does he move weight class? Let's fight Jorge. Or you fight Jorge, get some money. But see, the thing was, I called it out earlier on two or three podcasts ago that Jorge was going to fight Connor. Mm -hmm. Now that's not going to happen because Jorge's in jail. Yeah, fucking idiot. God damn it. That would have been a hell of a fight. Oh, Jorge. I don't know, maybe this maybe this will work out for the Masvidal Covington fight again. You know who's gonna work out for it? Who? Us. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Us. Regardless. Regardless. We're taking that W. <laughs> we we won. Yeah, we did. We're due. We're undefeated. Thanks for going to prison, bro. <laughs> yeah, thanks for going to jail, Jorge. You have you have some here yeah, that's a school bus stops? Hmm? School bus stops? Why'd you read? Oh yeah. Like school bus stops. Like, 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? Have like have you seen school bus stops recently? Did you ride the school bus? No. I used to think riding the school bus was a privilege, so I didn't do it. Well, because you didn't deserve to? No, I just didn't think I was rich enough to ride the bus. Did you have a school bus stop? We might have. Don't what? you just go to the stop sign and they just pick you up? <laughs> no. Oh, I don't I don't you know gotta, how this works. You I, gotta, so you got a designated spot okay. in the suburbs. You're from Trenton. Yeah, I'm from the city. <laughs> yeah, the city of Trenton. Yeah. So basically you have a spot. You at the end of your street. If you're lucky, it's at the end of your driveway. If you're real rich, it's at the end of your driveway. Mm. Mine was at the end of my street. Okay. And, you know, my mom worked, single mom. Like, if it was raining, like, maybe one of the other parents hooked us up. Maybe my mom was, like, oh, like had enough time in her day to, like, sit with us at the school bus so we didn't get rained on. Otherwise, we walked down to the spot. We bullshitted with the crew. Yeah. Sometimes you had, like, your friend walk from two neighborhoods over oh. just to hang out with you at the school bus stop Hell if yeah. your spot was legit. And a lot of shit got figured out at the school bus stop, <laughs> physically and mentally, <laughs> right? That girl that just moved in down the street, was she looking at me? I don't know. The weird kid that lives down the street from you that you've never talked to your whole life, but now you're in school with him because he didn't get into, like, the Catholic school he wanted to? Mm. You got to talk to this dude. You got to socialize. Now when I drive past school bus stops, I see, like, parents waiting with their kids one kid wearing his mask, nobody else with a mask on, all the parents waiting, nobody's saying anything because it's like, oh, parents are here, dude. Little Johnny's dad's here. That kid's a, that dude's a stiff. Oh, that's whack. He tuck, he tucks his shirt into his underwear. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like He wears flip-flops year-round, tucks, oh. tucks his shirt into his underwear. He doesn't get cold. Gross. Yeah. Gross. It just seems like this weird place. Like, huh. parents are like, it's not safe for my kid to stand at the bus stop anymore. What the fuck? <laughs> that's where that's where characters are made. Yo, for real. Stop standing at the bus stop with your kids. It's like, let them walk home. Yeah. Let them talk, sh- drop the F-bomb. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the other day when I was at the gym at nighttime, the kids, young kids, were playing basketball on the court. I heard some F-bombs come out of, like, a second grader. I was like... Yes. Yeah, he gets it. That kid gets it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, my parents aren't around. Fuck you. Yeah. You, you know go. what I'm saying? Chris, hit me with that layup next time, you bitch. Like, Whoa. literally with the aggression. And eventually some kid, Chris is going to hit puberty before Johnny, and he's going to be like, yo, I don't like when you talk to me like that. <laughs> bitch slap. There you go. It's definitely going to be a bitch slap now because Will Smith just set precedent. There you go. So now parents are going to double down and stay at the bus stop longer than they would have because Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. It's like, is my kid going to smack another kid now? If he has bitch tendencies, he might. He might. So, like, I, I don't understand. Well, like, the the parents are like the helicopter parents. Yeah, there you go. Let your kids breathe. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't need to be there every minute of the day. Let them build character. Like you lit, you put your sixth grader on the school bus, and the mom's like waving at him. He's straight, like you're embarrassing yeah, he's me. Like, he says, "I'm embarrassed for your kid." Yeah, dude, cut it out. I drove past my mom's neighborhood the other day. My old stop. Oh, literally every parent that has a kid is like waiting with their kid in the morning, That's in weird. complete silence. That's like, weird. Nobody's like, oh, like did you like nobody's like, oh, this is the only time we really get to spend together. Like if you were like. Hey, this is the only time I get to see my kids. I'm going to sit there and talk with them a little bit. Fine. But it's just like literally everybody's just like dismal as shit. Like we just survived Corona. It's fucking 8 a.m. No one wants to be did, out. <laughs> Dad, did you hear about Hunter Biden's laptop? <laughs> None of that. No. None of that. And on top of that, like what do you worry about? There's not that many people kidnapping kids these days. Mm-hmm. Every kid's got a cell phone. When we were kids, we were taught how to fight. Right. This one time we were down and we we had this like we had this grassy knoll area in my neighborhood. It was like kind of close to my house. And we would meet like squad deep nice. kids. We'd have full football teams with like with with like second string and everything. That's how many kids would show up. And after school we would play football or soccer or soccer turned into rugby until somebody's knee got broken inevitably. <laughs> Literally I, it happened too many times to count. There's always like a kid like named Eric with a knee brace on and yo. everybody's like everybody's like, yo, what happened? Be like, your soccer turned into rugby and I wasn't ready. Did I pick the ball up? And Matt Little hit me with the block. Damn. Dude, 
straight arms. Fucking Eric. Right? So this one time we're playing down at the spot. And so it's like my brother's friends, some of my friends. Like, we got, like, big kids, middle kids. Like, we got a mismatch of kids, but we got two two teams. We're playing football. And this dude shows up. Like, middle-aged man. Mm. Named Joe C. That's how he introduced Joe. himself. Drove a Jeep Cherokee. Dude was a bitch. <laughs> he pulls up and introduces himself as the president of the homeowner situ- like association. Sorry, I'm fucking squeaky McSqueak. Squeak. Yeah, Yo, where are these sand panels out for the squeaking, dude? Wait, I can just mute you. Yeah, Andrew, get muted. I got the mic now. Dude. Mind. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, if you wanted to fucking improv the story from here and just, like, take it and make it your story, you can. Yeah, you showed up. Took a shit in front of everyone. Dude, and he got arrested. Dude, that's not at all what happened. No, uh, okay, all right. Never no, this guy was prominent. Oh, right? This has been my neighborhood. This guy showed up, right? Polo, khakis, f- kind of fat. Joe, I'm Joe C. Blah, blah, blah. What do you like? You kids can't play here. And we're like, cuz. <laughs> cuz. We've been playing on this field for years. Mm. I'm literally like, I'm in like seventh grade at this point, right? Yeah. I was like, we've had like fights on this field. This is like, they're going to name it after us. <laughs> right? You don't see kids playing there anymore because their parents wait for them at the school bus stop. They'd never let them play with this many kids. Yeah. Forget about it. So this dude comes up and he's telling us how we can't play on this field in case somebody gets hurt. I'm like, somebody gets hurt. This kid over here literally saw crutches. Somebody's already <laughs> been hurt. Nobody's suing anybody. This is where we play, bro. And like me being the obnoxious loudmouth kid that I was, was like, don't worry, children. Rufio's got this. Uh-huh. I felt like I was like Peter Pan had left. Rufio was in charge of the Lost Boys now, and Josie was gonna get back in his car, or we were gonna beat the shit out of him. Yeah. And I get face to face with this dude. Like, mind you, my boy Joey G's like cr- climbing an evergreen tree behind him because, like, he's just like, I don't know, I'm gonna do this. And like, I'm talking shit to this dude's face, being like, "Who the fuck are you, big guy?" Like, <laughs> literally, like in his face. I was like twelve. And I'm like, what is your problem, dude? Are you a goddamn pedophile? <laughs> I was like coming up to a squad of kids like this talking to us. You want to talk to my mom about this? <laughs> you bitch. I swear to God. I was like, I was like, if you stand on this field any longer, we are going to rally up and you are done, dude. Yeah. I literally got 20 to 30 kids here. I know my brother's down to ride and five of these other kids are going to hop in if I throw a punch. Like, we're going to beat the shit out of you, Joe. You're interrupting our football game. Wait, what grade were you in? I was in seventh grade. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. I was maybe in sixth grade. It might have been the summer in between sixth and seventh. We had that many kids out there. Could have been summertime. So that would have been how many, how many uh, solid seventh graders right there? There was probably like five seventh graders and then like, you know, 10 or 15 sixth graders, and then my brother was in fifth grade, so there was probably, like, my brother rolled squad deep everywhere he went, so there was probably, like, 20 fifth graders. <laughs> we had, like, the Adamai twins, dude, threat. We had this, uh, uh, there was one kid above us. Uh-huh. There was this other kid, uh, Dave Andrews, shout out. Yo. He was, like, two grades above me, so I'm like, this dude's down to ride. He wears a basketball jersey in the wintertime. Holy shit. No, no undershirt. Holy We're going to bang this dude up. That kid's crazy. So I'm like, who are you, pedophile? We're going to play on this field regardless of what you say. And he's like, oh, I'm going to have to call the authorities. I'm like, call all the cops, dude. You're leaving in handcuffs or in a body bag. <laughs> Let's Go! At which point, Joey G fucking falls out of this evergreen, br- breaks every fucking branch coming down. <laughs> breaks every branch coming down. This dude, Joe fucking C, turns, and he's like, well, it's pu- damage to public property. Joe G panics and just fucking runs back to my house. <laughs> Literally just runs back to my house, tells my mom. Right, so we think we got it under control, but then fucking Tiff Man shows up. Damn. We literally see the minivan coming down the street. I was like, oh, dude, now you fucked up. Tiff's about to light you up, dude. (laughs) This guy knew better, got in his car. But, like, as he was getting in his car, we, like, read him the ride. We, like, followed him back to his car. Like, get the back in your car, buddy. We're going to play football here. You're interrupting the championship. You guys are fucking crazy. (laughs) This dude got into his car, gets back out of his car. He goes, you assholes. My dog just ate my meatball sub. I was like, what the fuck does that have to do with us? You idiot. You left a meatball sub in the car with a fucking dog, you idiot. <laughs> so, so we started insulting him even more. This idiot. But So, like, he gets into his car. My mom gets out. She blocks him in. Mm. She's like, what are you doing, dude? And he just drives off, right? Just reverses and, like, goes around and leaves. And she's like, and they're literally like, oh, it's fine, Mrs. Ben. Like, ain't, we were going to beat the shit out of him. 
And my mom, like, commended me. It was not a good way to give me positive feedback. Yeah. I was like, okay, I can fight adults now. <laughs> I'm, I'm cleared hot. Yeah. I'm cleared hot. Guns hot, dude. Fucking load your mags. Holy shit. So this dude comes back, like, a few weeks later. And he's, like, telling us we can't play on the field again. And I'm literally, like, just got my first cell phone. We got cell phones because my mom could never keep track of us. Yeah. So it was, like, she literally got a phone with, like, 30 minutes on it, which we would, like, blow out the plan somehow like home girls or whatever mm-hmm. my mom would be getting these stupid cell phone bills i'm like you should have got us more than 30 minutes <laughs> get people to call yeah she's like you're only supposed to be calling me when you're done soccer practice so i can pick you up I'm like nah so <laughs> dude, <laughs> nah, 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 works. nah no i had like an antenna that like we had like a little blinky hell diamond yeah. in it dude i had a custom nokia dude hell yeah and um i had to convince my mom why i needed a different cover i was like mom you got me a red phone i'm not cool now I need I need a clear case or like a chrome one because that's what's in the matrix. Yeah, you know. So like this dude Joe C comes back and the second time wasn't that climactic. He gets out of his car, tells us how we can't, and I'm literally like, bro, like, what do you not understand about talking to kids that are under 18 years old? You rapist piece of shit. <laughs> I was like, I literally had all these kids screaming, pedo, pedo. Oh my god! Like this dude gets back in his car. He's like, I'm calling the cops. I'm like, I'm calling the cops. <laughs> literally. Called the cops on this dude. I'm like, you're the president of the homeowners association. You're about to go to jail. Nine one one on the way, dude. God, dude. Cop showed up. Nothing really happened. Right. But I think they probably told him like, stop talking to kids, guy. Yeah. Fast forward to 2022. <laughs> Parents now stand at the bus stop with their kids. How are you going to build character? Like, I'm a strong man. You're not going to come up to me and tell me something that's not like. Like, I've, I've learned how to, like, keep it in check relatively. But, like, kids learned. Like, we piled up. Like, we had a team, and we were ready to put this dude in his own trunk and drive his car into a retention basin. Yeah, boy. Like, you're going to the river, Joe C. Like, mm-hmm. we were rowdy kids that played too many video games and occasionally played football after school. Like, it was not a fight you wanted to pick. Like, Halo? Yeah. Have you ever heard of it, dude? I'm a, Like, we're, we're a unit here. We've got a clan and everything. <laughs> like, <laughs> we were literally, like... And, like, now that I'm, like, older, I'm, like, that was incredibly sketchy. That was very sketchy. Why is a grown man coming up to a group of children to talk to them? Like, we got no business with that. So, I guess, on the other hand, you can kind of understand why parents stand at the school bus. with Because there's random dudes named Joe C. pulling up in Jeep Grand Cherokees with Basset hounds that are eating their meatball subs. Like, the guy's got a lot of on his plate. Yeah, there you go. Dude, well, he, he used he, to have a lot on his plate. He he's could, it. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, <I didn't> continue. <laughs> yeah, like that dude was like one second away from snapping and putting one of us into the car. Exactly. Right. You never know, bro. You don't know. That's why you got to raise strong, independent children. Because, like, when are you going to, like, if you aren't there, what is your kid going to do? Oh, yeah. At 12 years old, even if I was by myself, I was going to put up such a fight that, like, the, somebody trying to kidnap me. I'm like, I'm going to bite a chunk of your skin out. <laughs> I'm like dead set on not getting not getting kidnapped. Yeah. So it's like we need to get back to like creating solutions to problems, not like doing this. So like in the morning when I drive to work, I'm always like, what 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 kind of problems are we going to have in like 10, 15 years when these weak-ass kids are like. Can't figure shit out. Can't figure shit out on their own. They're like, oh, my Uber's not here on time. What do I do? <laughs> Walk. I don't know. Yeah. Right? Did you ever, when you were that old, that old, did you think, like, stuff was, like, ridiculously far away? Oh, yeah. Dude, I had to, I mean, yeah. I had to walk home from high school one time, uh-huh. which wasn't that far away from my house. It's, like, less than two miles. Yeah. And I was, like, pissed that my mom forgot <laughs> me at school. I was like, Mom, you forgot me. You're mm-hmm. supposed to, like, you want me to do these extracurriculars and play soccer and be a good kid and all. Like, you got to remember to pick me up. I just, like... I just, like, almost spent 40 years in the desert, like the Jews in the fucking Bible, walking. Like, this was an extravagant, like, I had to really, uh, like. I'm dehydrated. And now I go for, like, runs Uh for, like, multiple miles. And it's, like, I can, like, run around the school and then back to my mom's house and then all the way back to Yardley. And I'm, like, oh, that was a pretty good run. Yeah. Like, I was a weak-ass kid. And I thought I was the shit. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I couldn't even walk two miles home from school. Uh God damn it. I used to walk to school all the time. Yeah? Yeah, that shit. That shit. I feel like sometimes you and I grew up kind of the same in terms of the way we figured shit out on our own. Yeah, because you our just had to. It's yeah, like you, you had just, to. You wait around. Like, dude, there was times where like, my mom forgot about us. Like, she, I mean, she's a busy lady. Yeah. Like, 
It's like, do, do we just wait here until tomorrow? <laughs> no. No, you walk home. <laughs> you you get home. Out. You're like, yo, Timmy, we're going to fuck. We're just going to walk. We're going to hoof it, dude. Yeah, dude. It's fine. We'll talk about some stuff. We'll talk about Crazy Bones and Pokemon cards on the way home. We'll be good. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a good time. You know? And if something comes up, just run. <laughs> run yeah. or fight, bro. Yeah, dude. So, like, you, I think it's that we got, like, such chubby kids now. Mm. They obviously can't run away. And nobody thinks fighting is okay. <laughs> so it's like, oh, man, we got to protect our children. Oh, you're just going to fucking sit there? <laughs> we're just going to sit there. Fuck that, bro. I, bro, I used to be so fucking fast. That's one thing I knew to do was to run. Because, you know, I seen some shit growing up in the neighborhood. And, like, if, if the vibes were off, you just kind of knew, you know? You just fucking You're like, eh, don't stick around. Just be like, yeah, you know what? I'll find out about this tomorrow. Yeah, I don't need to be here right now. I don't need to be here. I'm going to run. Mm-hmm. Did you just run everywhere as a kid? Sometimes, yeah. You remember that time, like, you just ran everywhere? <laughs> yeah, I ran to the park, ran to school, dude, ran you, to the corner store. You just didn't, or, like, when we started riding bikes on our own, it oh, was like, fuck. Dude, we would have to, we would ride hard as shit yeah. everywhere. Yep. It's like it was a race everywhere. My yeah. brother would be, like, miles behind us. We'd have to stop for him when he was, and then he'd, like, he got stronger. <laughs> and then all up. of a sudden, he's, like, hardcore bike riding with us. Like, it's because we made him. Hell, yeah. You got to... Raise the key. You can't always expect the results. Yeah, bro. Right away. No. You got to learn these things as a kid. Exactly. You can only learn these things like when to and when not to use the F-bomb. Mm-hmm. When your parents aren't around. Yeah. Spending all your time with your kids or just, you're just raising weak kids. Mm-hmm. And I don't even have kids, so I'm able to comment on your kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Kids fucking suck, lady. <laughs> Dude, so like I started dropping the F-bomb in second grade. Hell yeah. Right? With, with my man, Alex Fager. We would just sit on this fucking playground and just come up with creative ways to just like incorporate the f word <laughs> and i don't know who said it first but like once one of us said it it was like yo i got your back you got mine we're gonna say the f word together all the time now where did you hear it first do you remember oh my dad yeah oh for sure I that remember that are my it. cousins i had older uh-huh. cousins so like do you like the f word and like r-rated movies in my household might as well PG. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. Sure, dude, you can watch Raiders of the Lost Ark before you can speak. Mm. Like, I, I I watched Indiana Jones. I watched the dude, like, come up, like, ripping the dude's heart out of his chest before I was, like, even able to speak. Oh, shit. It was, like, my first movie. Yeah. Michael Keaton Batman was, like, my favorite movie at four. It's like, bro, that shit slapped. Bro, it's like, yeah. Jack Nicholson, get out of here. The guy was the man. I wanted to be the Joker so bad. Bro, Danny DeVito's Penguin? Oh, that was, he was gross as the He pet. was disgusting. <laughs> yeah, slimy shit. Slimy ass, dirty dude. Yeah. Yeah, but like kids don't, ha- kids don't have that these days. So then they grow up and older and they're like, what? Bad things happen to people? <laughs> right? It's a cool yeah. shit. Bad things happen. Yeah. Oh my God. Or you watch these kids like literally walk everywhere with their hand, with the watch on the phone. Dude, when we were kids, you kept your head on a swivel. Yup. You never know when Joe C was going to sneak up and try and put you in a trunk. <laughs> Metaphorically, like, there was tons of people, like, kidnapping kids. Mm. And inevitably, there'd always, like, some girl named Kelsey every year would, like, lie and be like, oh, this strange man stopped me and said hi to me. And then they'd, like, investigate it. And then she would break under pressure and be like, yeah, I lied. My parents are getting divorced. Oh, no. Nobody cares about me. Jesus. That's literally what would happen all the time. Nobody was ever actually getting approached. Uh-huh. It's like a strange man. And they'd like release a sketch and be like a dude with a hat, sunglasses on, like a firm jawline. <laughs> it's like you just described 80% of the men. <laughs> it's like all those dudes are driving around and be like, oh, shit. They're looking for a Corolla. I drive a Corolla. Yeah, it's like, fuck. oh, my God, dude. I'm, am I the pedo? Did I black out? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, let your kids, let your kids grow up, dude. Yeah, let kids be kids, man. I remember the first time. You know, like, because, like, you're dropping the F-bomb so much as a kid. You get comfortable with it. Then you then you let it slip in the wrong time. Damn. Like, on a soccer field, like, right in front of your bench with all your parents, like, lined up in their chairs. And somebody, like, tries to slide tackle you and call him a fucker. <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, shit. They look at my mom like, did you know he knew this word? My mom's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we talked like edu- well-educated pirates in my house. Nice. It's like good vocabulary, but like every other word was the F word. Yeah. So you had to get like, there's no other way to get like how, you know, like your emotion across without some good curse words. So yeah, some would say that's true. Know. Yeah. Know. The episode got exciting. Yeah, <laughs> towards the end, just talking about fucking Beatles. <laughs> Yo, dude, Joe C, man, shout out. That guy's probably dead now. Yo, shout out Joe he C. He's probably man. like fifty years old when we were kids. Oh, uh, he's definitely like, dead. It was like you know twenty years ago. Unless he's like seventy. He's like seventy. Yeah, but he was a fat shit, so like he's probably got heart condition. Corona probably got him. Long gone, baby. Yeah, 
You know what I'm saying? Died by sub. Do you know, we'll close it out. Did mm. you know that uh, overdose deaths during Corona tripled? Holy shit. And Corona didn't kill that many people. Like, there's more people that died from overdoses than there was of Corona. That's crazy. Pretty sure that's not a real fact. It might be a real fact. I heard it somewhere. I had no idea about that. Yeah. You want to know it on a lighter note? (laughs) Yeah, keep your kids safe. Keep your kids safe. There you go. (laughs) There you go. Yeah, let your kids walk to the bus, walk to school. We'll end it on Formula One. Oh, shit. Hot take. Who takes the championship this year based upon the two races we've had? Um, on, on one, two, three, we'll say the name okay. at the same time. One, two, three. Leclerc. Max for seven. <laughs> <laughs> I said Leclerc. Bro, I have faith in Ferrari, bro. They, I think they got it, man. Dude, they've got points holder right now. They, yeah, they're winning constructor and is in points they're and leading. Isn't Leclerc, his godfather died in 2014 in a wreck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was like there was a Gasly. I can't remember. It was no, one of those. It's two. Leclerc's it was Leclerc. Godfather, like Leclerc's whole family. Like Leclerc's from um, uh, Monaco, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was his Godfather. Like that dude's built to race. And honestly, like Max Verstappen, I like Max Verstappen the way I like Darth Vader. Same. Right. I Max guess. Verstappen has to exist yeah. because Leclerc is like. The nicest guy in the world. He is. He just wants to win for, like, the most pure reasons. Yeah. Right? It's because he's, like, representing his family and, like, his like his godfather and his dad. Like, he's representing all of these people. Yeah. Where Max Verstappen's like, if I'm not going to win, I'm going to crash my car. <laughs> if I'm not going to win, no one's going to win. Nobody's going to win. We're going <laughs> to yeah. shut this race down. Red flag. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? Red We're going to shut it. the whole track down. I will crash <laughs> my shit into yours. Yeah, We'll bro. see who's going to win and who's not going to win. Bro. So, like, I think if either of those two won, I'd be happy. Yeah. I'd honestly be happiest if Hamilton won, but. Why? I like Hamilton. Why? He's a great racer. Is he, though? He is. Is he still, though? I think he still is. I think the car sucks. I think he lost his edge. No. I think he lost his edge. No, bro. The car sucks. The car sucks. I just can't get behind, like, how he talks about being oppressed and shit like that. Oh, maybe like he is black. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna he, that's factual. Mm-hmm. But like, you're one of the most highest paid athletes in the world, if not the highest paid. Right? Mm-hmm. Where's your struggle at? Like, what do you like? He doesn't like. He just talks about himself and like being a minority and stuff like that. And it's like, look, 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 look. If you want to talk about the minorities mm-hmm. and like help them out, more power to you. Hats off. But, like, talking about yourself and your struggle, everyone, every single person that's a Formula One racer got, there's 20 of them in the world. Yeah. Right? That's it. Every single person there went through the equal, if not more, struggle than he did. Mm. Right? Some of them went through more, some of them went through less, but they all struggled. You're one of 20 in the world. You struggled. Whether it was like a race struggle, a financial struggle, maybe you didn't have teeth growing up and you had to eat applesauce a lot and you Mm. were malnourished. Like everybody had like immense struggle. So to like elevate your struggle purely because of race, every time you get an opportunity, it's like, I like, I get why he does it, but Mm. it's kind of like, dude, like you're like, I don't want to say you're beating a dead horse and then, like, make somebody upset, but, like, you're kind of, like, that can't be your only struggle. Mm-hmm. Like, you had to have struggled, like, other ways than just because you were tanner than everybody else. Like, you're here. You're one of 20. You made it. Mm-hmm. Like, use that platform to explain to people how to overcome struggle, not just acknowledge struggle. Mm-hmm. That's the problem I have with him. It's, it's, like, it's always woe is me. People don't want me to win. Blah, 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 blah. It's always been this way. It's because I'm a minority. It's like, no, dude. Like, People don't want you to win because there are thousands of people fighting for 20, one of 20 spaces. Mm-hmm. It, is, it might not have anything to do with your race. It just might be that you're in the most competitive seat in the world. Yeah. For you to not expect everyone to be against you is foolish. Mm-hmm. Why would you think anyone would support you? Because everyone is in it for themselves at that level. 
Yeah, their egos are huge. Their egos are huge. Everybody wants the championship. Everybody is fighting not to get cut from their team because there's only 20 spots, so there's tons of people fighting for the same spot. So, like, for you to act like like your struggle is any more significant than everybody else's, it's just kind of like it's doing your struggle a disservice. Because, mm. like, your struggle is, like... Life is supposed to be hard. The harder your life is, like, there's an argument to make that, like, the more launch you have. Because, like, you want it more than the person who doesn't struggle as much. So you're willing to do more for it. Mm -hmm. More effort. So, like, your struggle is a gift. So to act like your struggle wasn't a gift, if you didn't have that struggle, you wouldn't be in that seat. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I kind of like, I'm like, you're not helping anyone by just, like, complaining about your struggle. Just be like, yeah, I struggled, and I fucking got here because of X, Y, and Z, and I didn't give up, and I didn't take no for an answer. Like, using your struggle to help people is a way better use of struggle than just being like, woe is me, which kind of everyone, to a certain degree, is like, oh, yeah. you know? Mm. And it's not even just like a race thing. It's like people are like, I'm, I have psycho I have anxiety. I have, like, everybody's got something these days. Like in the nineties, nobody had anything. Yeah, true. It's like what, what? When did struggling become like this badge of honor? It's like overcoming the struggle is the badge of honor, mm -hmm. and then helping other people overcome struggle is like the second level of honor. Mm -hmm. Just being in a struggle, there's nothing, there's no honor to it because the whole world's in a struggle. Yeah. So there's like you're just one of a couple billion people struggling, and now you're one of the highest paid athletes in the world. So like. Was your struggle, like, good or bad? Because mm -hmm. if you didn't have it, you wouldn't be here. Yeah, true. So, no prisoners, even for <laughs> Hamilton. <laughs> even for Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, I don't want him to win it all. He's won enough. Like, <laughs> He's eh, won enough. Get out of here, dude. You're, like, the most winning Formula One driver of all time, and you're still complaining about your struggle. <laughs> it's like, you thought, this, think, you thought this was going to be easy? I don't know if it's just his struggle. He's just maybe other people that are dealing with it. I don't know. That's just how I look at it. I don't know. I don't look at it as he's always... Talking woe is me. It's more like other people out there might be experiencing what I experience. So he's like, oh yeah. He's like, I'm just used to the struggle because I grew up in it. It's like, yeah, they all did. Mm. You're not special. Yeah, no. But he like acts like his struggle is better than everyone else's, or more of a struggle, or it's more important because it's like a race related struggle. Mm. It's like, mm. yeah. I mean, what I from what I've seen from him is, you know, people don't want him to win just because. He's been winning for a long time. And like, yeah, you know, he, he acts like nobody wants them to win because he's black. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> that's weird. Like, that I, I don't have like the diet, like the exact things he said, but there's a couple times where I've watched him speak mm. and I'm like, nobody doesn't want you to win because you're black. They don't want you to win because you're the top dog. Yeah. You're winning all the time. <laughs> you're winning all the time. That's mm. why people don't want you to win is because you're always winning and another other people want to win too. And there's only 20 of you. Mm hmm. So, like, to act like you're, people don't want you to win because you're a minority? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And you're doing the whole, you're doing the forward momentum of that conversation a disservice. Because mm -hmm. the conversation needs to happen, but it needs to happen in, like, a positive way that, like, amplifies the conversation, but then also moves the needle. Just talking about a problem doesn't move the needle. Yeah, true. Setting the example of the needle, like, that's how you get it done. Yeah. Speaking as a white man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Cause but, I, I don't know that kind of struggle, but I know struggle and like struggle makes strong people. It does. So yeah. like so at a certain point you kinda have to like be proud of your struggle, but also like be proud of like how you overcame it. Mm hmm So no, I agree. Totally agree with that. Yeah. So yeah, I still got LeClaire. Yeah. I got Leclerc taking it. Leclerc is definitely, I mean, he's points leader right now. Second race. He has a good car. He has a really strong car. Ferrari's ready to dominate again. Yeah. McLaren's got their heads up their asses. They got to stop <laughs> they got to stop building new cars. Yo, for real. Just figure out one car. Yeah. Stop building new versions. Bro. The pro like don't make a new bad car. Mhm. Mm make your last car good. <laughs> a new bad figure car. it out yeah Stop, don't just oh, we're, you know we had a lot of problems with our last car so we just we started from scratch and rebuilt the whole thing again it's like oh well that worked the last five times yeah it's like you guys have great drivers you guys haven't won in six or seven years now 
anything. No, there's middle of the pack, if that. Yeah, and know? then you got like, it's kind of funny when people get excited to get like third or fourth or sixth place. It's like, yeah, we got six. Yeah. It's because they know like you got Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes. And if you win behind them, you did a good job. Yeah, and you win more money. Yeah. To put towards your car. So Yeah, you know? if you finish ten or under, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah bro. That like P like place four and five or five and six determine tens of millions of dollars that yeah. you can put towards the car. So Yeah, so if you're six or cool. under, it's like super significant. Yeah. yeah. Very significant, yeah. Yeah, also Alfa Romeo. They're Dr. strong. Botas. They're strong. Botas, I love the fact that he's still racing. I think he, like, I get why they got rid of him from Mercedes. Like, they wanted a new driver to come up. And George is, like, a young, aggressive next Hamilton. Yeah. Um, he's gonna win hard. He's he a, he's gonna he's gonna be a champion. Maybe not this year, but definitely in the next couple of years. Like we're gonna see a, a serious contender. Yep. Um, Botas is like he's such a t- he was such a team player he when was. he was on Mercedes that like I respected him for being a team player, but like because he was a team player, I wanted him to win mm-hmm. on his own. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you got it. What it takes, like, stop. Like he was just like, okay. Ha- ha- like they would just let Hamilton pass him. Mm-hmm. Like, like I get it. Like Hamilton's in the you know in the thing for championship. Yeah, I mean, and everybody wants to win, but like you're one of twenty in the world. You have probably unreal competitive spirit, and to like put your competitive spirit aside like has to hurt. Yeah, that's what. And I, he takes it like so professionally. I, I wonder how it would be if it would be better if. There weren't A and B drivers. If there were just twenty different teams instead of ten different teams, I kind of wish that there were twenty different teams instead of like teams of two. Yeah, I think we would really see like more competitiveness. Yeah, it, you would kind of see. I think it would be better for the sport. Mm-hmm. It would be because then you don't have that. Where you just like the one guy pass you because he's the A driver and you're the B driver. You know what I mean? It's like okay, everyone's A, everyone's an A driver. Everyone everyone's wants in to it. win. Yeah, everyone's exactly. in it. Yeah, that'd be sick. But, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Moral of the story is: if a dude comes up to you at the bus stop, <laughs> throat chop, or a bitch slap, open hand, closed fist, whatever, hit him. Don't even ask questions, especially if his name's Joe C. Yeah. Don't bitch slap somebody on stage that's smaller than you. There you go. It doesn't make you look good. Doesn't. Even if your wife's hot as hell with a bald head. Mm-hmm. Not okay. Not okay. Don't sucker punch the dude that beat the shit out of you for <laughs> 25 minutes. <laughs> right? Yeah. And expect us to talk a lot about Formula One because it started and, you know, the next race is on the 8th or yeah. 8th, 9th, and 10th. So we got... April 8th, got testing. April 9th, qualifying. April 10th is the Grand Prix. Oh, don't we have a race this weekend? Too? I don't think so. There's no race this weekend? It's usually two weeks because you got to get the cars to the next spot. Oh, I thought it was every week. No. Nah. Oh, no, I guess you're right, yeah. Because, like, think about it. Like, you got to put all your equipment, all your offices, all your trailers. You got to either drive them or fly them to the next spot, which that's, is usually far as fuck away. That's fucking insane. Yeah, just to emphasize how much money is in Formula One, they literally put their stuff on planes and fly them to the next thing. Two weeks later, another race in another continent, equally as rich city. That's insane, dude. Like, you literally take all your shit, entire pit, all the equipment, the cars, everything, put them on a plane. Like, it's expensive for people to fly to, like, Florida Southwest for $49. <laughs> like, could you imagine what it costs to, like, fly cars around the world? Fuck that, bro. Millions. They must have a hookup or something. Yeah, they have a plug. It's called the Millions. It's called the Oligarchs. <laughs> yeah, the Oligarchs, literally. <laughs> um, so thanks for listening. Check out the other shows. We're really excited for the uh, Brit Around Town episode. We're trying to get a little collab going there. Um, hopefully get some charities on here, some other local businesses that might not have come on here without Brittany. Um, so it's going to be interesting, you know, some episodes coming out of that. Mm-hmm. Hit the subscribe button. If you want a good laugh, go listen to the Logan Camp episode. <laughs> that kid can talk shit with the best of them. Yeah. Um, 
might be a famous fighter someday. We had him on here when he was a kid, so yeah, we had him first. We're you know had we're him first. first. Yeah, we're the first. We're the first. If you ain't first, you last. Exactly. Um. Also, the Alpha Bravo K9 walk is coming up on the twenty third at um a park in Lower Makefield from eleven to two. Bunch of food, some people out there. Come check it out. Um, and you got any questions, reach out to us on Instagram. Hopefully by now uh, our Instagram account is um, up and running. <laughs> up and running because currently as we're recording this um, on March 31st, our uh, Instagram account's locked. Yeah, we can't post. Kind of made a boo-boo. <laughs> it's okay. Oops. <laughs> it's whatever. <laughs> but so hope you enjoyed the show. We enjoy making it for you. We're loving the feedback. Channel's growing. If you want to come on the show, hit us up. Um, no guarantees, but we'll definitely um, look into it. And, um, yeah, thanks for listening.